making moves in a sum of some common over 50,000 rand to invest in a business. 13 entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Each entrepreneur will get an opportunity to pitch for this investment into their business. The judges will use their own discretion. We'll go through to our final episode where they will battle it out for the grand prize. We're going to make you moves. In Jalong, we're going to go to 2 p.m. We're going to go to ABC1. We're going to go to ABC1. A platform that would um, take the very best of, you know, um, black wedding suppliers. Now's probably a good time to tell us what you want to do with the money. One of the challenges that I have in terms of um, is, 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 is the expense, high expense of um, equipment. To me, it's viable to give her money because we see that there's a return and it doesn't have a roof on it. No. No. Photography captures moments that are usually impossible to reproduce. Get to your own thing. I go on your own thing. But when I beg you, I'm gonna nag you. I'm going to. I'm so tired of it, Tom. I'm going to go and pull a gun. Pull a gun. I'm going to be tired of it, Tom. I'm going to be tired of it. Casa. I look cool, look cool. As in pulling zetu. I'm trying to focus on the West Mam. I'm tired of the way I'm going. I'm going to go and say, "I'm going to say, 'Business like you.' I'm going to be cool." My name is Onatim Bonambi, owner of Onatim Bonambi Photography. I offer photography services, um, mainly for weddings um, and just lifestyle photography. You, know. you can find more of my work on my Facebook page, Onatim Bonambi Photography, um, or on my website, www.umphotography.co.za. I'm planning to Florida and visit Long Island, West Miami, and some business world. To get some basic tips, I'm so good at it. I'm not just a photographer by profession. A business like the operator, the guy, the lapo, the salakon. What do I get logo? I go show good here. Again, the umsevens, almost like a cool. Jomo bage pelagi, I'm not just a tattoo. I'm just a sugar sugar. The format line just sugar. As in the way the foot, as a sugar sugar. Later on, uzo be a line gimme konage, lapo ke konage, uzo be shooter itom. Never in yegela matla entuani. Inte mfunuge as guti yena itom ba itatayo itom be ezinjani unga nige futa sule leli business analu namtani. Prepare for e issue tier two. Essence and I am planning. Um, so I mean, we always try to buy essence into, you know, that got a contemporary African twist. You know, so it's not the by way to, you know, it will say to. I want to yes. see, you know, so in everything I know, to you know, we're quite modern, but you know, we always try to, you know, to 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 put in something that celebrates, you know, African culture. Nezi kulapa o become. I pin the foot to a twist of foot in a lazy kulezo strategy management. Is in jalo. Koto age, i camera yonage. If you are going to go get over to Sadek or Woody, Woga and Gana and Gaze into Lizzie Zico, Sabian thing at serious, who funu shoot it on me. I was working for him, you know, a, a few years, mm -hmm. and then get the fair window and gone by, you know, go go the chat delay. Mm -hmm. I'd like to start. I would like to start. A, you know, a family start having kids, and I knew from you know from Ekale and Dubai Azi in the first few years of Abanda Abanda Rasuba. You know, I'd love to spend a lot of time. You know, with them Ekai. Yes. So I I've always known Doba when it gets to that point. I'd want to be working from home. Dine dine shishin lam that I can run from home so that the kwa zban bene flexibility nde um uban di bene kwa shoban shay na ban na ban tuan. I photography is just one thing that I'm passionate ngayo. Um, I've always just loved um admired beautiful photos mm -hmm. and you know have always just made it a point to um, teach myself how to actually capture you know images more beautifully. So okay, we'll do it at some point. And go to a point where I realized, you know, but you know what? Actually, let me pursue this professionally as as opposed to it just being a hobby. So yeah, kala am going to urban be photographer, yeah. professional photographer. Mm. How I met Tonati was uh, at church actually. 
Um, so she's always been into photography. Um, and um, she, she saw my work on Facebook and she said, hey Pindi, I'm doing style, style shoots, but I don't have a stylist, so it would be nice for you to join the team. So that's how I actually met her team. She's a perfectionist, eh? <laughs> um, and, and I think what's teaching me is that you need to respect each, 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 each and everyone's craft. Because uh, I would come up with the concept for a shoot, but some like it would, it would happen that she doesn't see, or the rest of the team doesn't see the vision. Only when I implement the the concept, that's when everyone sees the vision. But uh, it's that thing of you need to be patient when you're working in a team. Also, you have shoot, the look and feel that you are trying to get from the shoot. So, yeah, when Doba, the way she's dressed, yeah. um, you know, it's uh, it's, an, it's an African theme, like I, I like I said before. Yeah. So, again, you know, location, it's you know, it's just about, it's just the land. It's just out, you know, in the land, as you know, we, you know, we owning the land. Can you look away from me? Can you... oh, I like that. I like... I really have to love this. You really have to love what you're doing. You really have to love what you're doing. I want to know that Oliver is up on, 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 on set. Lovely. I want to know what you're doing. The business is la open la le kwen la um di nuko na food. Sulo konska soko tuwa zu tati kefu utai angse benzi. Manje se ngu soma business manje ya se benza uja. Ko kunzi ma u u u separate sometimes sometimes but you know that space ne especially because abantu na bamba you know ba 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 sengin abaya iskolen ba sekai. So um into endi zame u yenza is that i kashalam the way I've I've separated my days at Xeni you know and number one. You know, so nine to twelve, Xeni. You know, it's me with the kids. My phone is off. The computers are calls, email. You know, and then get in the afternoon. That's when I I want to buy a dollar. It's just another kind of shooter in shot. Hmm. If you are taking the ends, I will enjoy it throughout the year. Hmm. You miss cut that kind of sit a year shot to get money. This is in your corner. Hmm. Your corner, your corner, get. Ah, I'm shot to get back on. How do you make sure the business like the face is on a limit, being a type of hands? Um, okay, yeah, I'm I'm trying to, yeah, I think it's seasonal, but um, like I said, Dubai is not just any clientele, so he sometimes I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm trying to, so I'll do I'm trying to more, and then go go in the car and bring a thing here, go back to get um. Some parts of the year, then I'll take on more it can be family, family shoes and maternity. So there's always something, you know, there's always something happening. What could you sell that is a commodity? I think the service, hey? I, I don't know if you can have your cake and eat it. As a result, she really doesn't have any emotional ties with any place. Sikri te usugu nae, ugu azgabanzi nge vela piyake, futa sifuna ugu azgu tige yena, ututuki saranja ni mpilo yake, jengo bage pelage ese umzali. school my kids I've always been home with them so um, so they didn't go to you know a crash or, or anything there's nothing that she has missed in Biluin Zeng and Nezak and and that's one thing Nam and Jingo Baba Wekai that I really appreciate everything that they've learned they've learned in the home environment in says mama a boy cannot work on an empty stomach Malusi looks after his grandfather's sheep and goats it's cut like a sneak, it's see like I. If you're seeing an, yeah, what ones are easy into that? That I guess other parents don't do. The you know the balancing is 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 something um 
that has to be very intentional. It's a, I must say, it, you know, it, you know, it needs you to organize your life. It needs you to think intentionally about, it needs me to think intentionally about my everyday. Oops. I'm um, Satibana on campus. I uh, were together at Erao back then, now University of Johannesburg. We always were very cautious about spending Iskati with, with ladies, you know, too much time with ladies, uh, uh, being Abandu Besond, you know. So, um, so Mganwam would always say, hey, listen, Zobeng Funda no Unati, can we just, can you just come and be number three in the room? <laughs> Just so that everything looks looks right. So the mum fundi is in Bonanji. So my husband is in ministry. He's a pastor. Um, he's actually been in ministry for the past like ten years um, in campus ministry. So at the same university, you know, University of uh, of Johannesburg, Goku. Um, we, we we have a church. Um, it's called His People, and we minister to students. Actually, because um, at the time, Mama why 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 lap a visitor earlier was when I was actually born. But then, the 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 other side, Mama Kuluam, Eastern Cape. Oh, na ti, oh, forget about going in back. I'm done with And then, I'm done. Oh, 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 so because it really affected um, me in terms of relationships, in terms of being able to attach to people um, because I, I, I I didn't attach to anyone for you know as as I'm doing for for a long enough period. So I found you know, but even in, in in relationships, it was it was hard for me. You know, friendships. When, you know, it was hard for me. You know, to attach because I had that thing about okay. You know, I think in club is subconscious. You know, but okay. You know, I'll I'll be here for a, a little time and then get you know I'll I'll move I'll, I'll move along to to someone to somewhere else. Two years ago, when I look at it, and then I look at 22-year-old yo, they look so young. <laughs> and at that stage, I, I didn't feel young. Most kuluma umshat is that I was not totally lumont umshat. At 22, I mean, I'd gone through a varsity, you know, and and I'd, I'd worked for a few years, you know. So I, you know, I was independent. I knew what I wanted. Now I'm in Pilenyam. Um, I felt like, you know, what this was the time uh, that I could you know, have a relationship with someone. You know, where exactly it was that I wanted to go and be learned. She has the ability to just keep going and, and make things, you know, happen. I'm a passionate person. I, you know, I give things you know, I, I, I give myself to stuff like wholeheartedly. Unati's business started as a hobby. What was in game for a local? What one of which logo and I went and got to Umjal? Unga Pisa got cool, Chongo Bagapelag, Pushoga Kulu, Lapa, a pagate. Come for a local in Aginta in Zag. 
wapata tagele ziku zaka nazo. Wakato tongeni, wakukula ke mkaba ngoyake, wangena ngamashi kwa zama business. Jenga manje kusi studio setu toku sana no pips. Bayabo nisa nanga masu akona ke langa panje, anga msiza ke lento gazi. Jongo bagelo mkaka sebenza kuona, uya ushinja. Futi ko pips ufunu gazi kuti lento gazi. Isebenza kanja nige lili business lai. Go figure up by making moves studios. Um, I'm not quite sure what to expect, but um, I'm looking forward to actually just getting some mentorship, getting some, you know, sound advice from, you know, people who know what they're talking about. With modern technology, just about anybody with a smartphone seems to have a camera at their fingertips. One wonders then where the future of photography lies. Unati is here to tell me what makes her business special, why it's still relevant, and what are her plans to make it grow. Unati, welcome to Making Moves. Thank you, thank you, Gabriel. Take a seat. Uh, so, you don't have a lot of time, mm -hmm. but what you're selling is time. Yes. Because yes. you don't have a commodity that mm. you're selling. Mm. So that's the first challenge in the business. How do you get around that? Okay. So what I've been trying to do recently is I'm, I'm trying to really like outsource all the things that don't need me. You know, so I've tried to um, look at what is it in my business that really, you know, needs me. What is it? Um, and for me, that is actually the preparing for the, the photo shoot and taking the actual photos. So, my um, Dean's layer is that now um, I've outsourced my editing. Um, and then I've also just recently, oh, and, and another thing is that now I work with a makeup artist and a stylist, do it as, you know, before I'd, I'd be the one who'd be communicating with the clients in terms of, you know, the look and things like that. So now I actually have someone, you know, dealing with, you know, with how the client will look. But then your turnover doesn't really allow you yeah. to hire all these people that you want to hire. So how are you funding that? Um... That is a big challenge. Uh, I, I still don't have answers, you know, for that yet. But that's an area where I feel like, okay, I need, um, I need assistance in. Um, and, and one of the thoughts that I've just had is, um, is focusing more on, on, on doing weddings as opposed to, um, you know, the other, you know, portrait sessions that I do. Because then, for example, I mean, the the industry, uh, because I do a lot of personal shoots. Um, I mean, a lot of them take place um, over the weekend anyway. So on a Saturday, um, if I'm if I'm if I'm working for eight to ten hours, you know, at a wedding, you know, that's that that has more of a turnover than you know if I'm doing a shoot that's going to take me two hours. So I'm trying to, I guess, you know, market myself, you know, market more of the you know the wedding um, services so that you know I you know I, I, I've got a few more more hours. One thing I'm still thinking about. Is, um, is, is having another photographer. I, I find that in any case, I end up referring like a lot of work to other people. Because anyway, you don't so, have the time to take yes, it on. Um, yes, so I mean, especially this year, and um, you know, I've, I've actually started, you know, doing more, you know, more advertising and more, you know, paid advertising and marketing. And you know, so that the, 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 um, the queries have been coming in, you know, and I found, you know, if I'm fully booked for today, that's, that's it, you know, sorry, try, try a friend, try a fellow photographer. You're selling stuff. So what could you sell that is a commodity? Do you sell, you know, like photography? Do you put stuff in galleries? Do you, you know, so that's not a service. Mm. It's straight up, you're selling a commodity. I walk into a place, I buy it, and you don't have to be there, mm. right? Mm. In the same way that painters and other types of artists create stuff and put it out there. Mm. So that's an option. The second option is you are potentially still selling your skill, but then you've got to be charging a premium for that because you don't want to spend a lot of time. Or you've got to say, I'm going to send my children to school and I'm going to work full time so that I can take more photographs and provide that service to more people. Because at the moment you're doing admin during the week and then taking photos on a Saturday. Do you work on Sundays? Um, I, I have been. I have been working on Sundays. Um... But you go to church most Sundays. Yes, I go to you church. You see, so if you're selling the, <laughs> the skill, you're essentially selling your time because it needs you to be there, which means you've got to make more time available. Or you're providing a service, which is really a facilitation service, 
which you're doing for free at the moment. You're marketing and sending on to suppliers, but your black supplier database mm. falls into that yeah. where you're now making a small amount of money from each person mm. that's getting work off your platform. Yeah. Because right now you're referring, and I'm not sure, I'm sure you're not taking a commission. I'm not. You're very sure that if I was referring work to you, I'd be like, where's my 5% homie? Where's my 10%? Because I'm about to give you a gig that I have paid for advertising to get, and I'm hoying you a free job. It's going to cost you 10%. Um, so which, which of these are we going with? I think the service, hey? I think okay. the service, because there's also just... Um, um, I guess more room, you know, to grow and it also, I mean, with the service, it doesn't necessarily need, you know, me there on a on day-to-day basis, you know, you can have other people, you know, running with that. Um, and I guess the good thing about the service is that it can also pull back to, you know, I mean, it's a wedding industry, you know, and then if, you know, my, um, you know, my work is also on that, it can also serve as a marketing platform for, you know, for, for my work as well. <sighs> I don't know if you can have your cake and eat it. So the issue is when you start mm -hmm. with the service, mm -hmm. you're going to have to convince me as a supplier why I should pay you every month to be on the service. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you're going to have to prove to me that you're going to be out there marketing the service, pushing it and growing it so that you can attract traffic onto the because mm. my first question is, oh, okay, so you've got this online platform. Mm. How many unique visitors are you getting every month? Mm. 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 And unless the number starts to make sense to me, I'm like, why should I sign on? Yeah, I don't know. Best of luck. Enjoy your, your, your coaching session. I hope it, it takes you a step further. Um, and I am absolutely in love with the way you structured your life and have seen some of your photography and think you're really, really skilled. Thank and I like you. some of the ideas that you've got. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it seems that the demand for Unati's services, she's definitely talented. Her work is amazing. However, she does struggle to meet the demand and perhaps lacks concrete plans to grow her business. I'm linking her with one of our highly experienced business coaches to discuss ways in which she can grow her business into the future. My interview with Pepsi was uh, quite hectic, um, but, but very good, um, very good. It, it helped me to think um, about certain things. Let's say she goes out and do marketing and she starts getting demands. Will she meet the, the demand? I don't know if we should be punishing somebody mm. for being mm. dedicated to their family. Pepsi interrogating Unati's business and hopefully she got some ideas to think about. She also needs to figure out how to structure her business so that she can meet her clients' needs. Jenga manje gyo tlala panzi no mkekeish ozo mnigeza ize ngebiso ez nga msiza geyena Unati ugutige atutugi say business like. Tell me about this new project. Okay, so basically, um, this project is, is is about creating a platform where um, you know small black um, businesses that are weddings in the, in the wedding industry, so okay. wedding suppliers, um, get a platform to showcase their you know their, their service offering. Because you know, just being in this um, in, in in this business, you know, I've come across you know like very very good. Um, um, you know, businesses. The the only problem is that um, you know a lot of you know black businesses aren't you know big players when it comes to the win win wedding industry, mm -hmm. and yet you have you know like you know very very you know good um, you know people that have good products, people that you know that have excellent services. So basically, we just want to you know create a place where um, you know a, a platform for them to um, to showcase their work. It's more like starting another business because she's creating a platform where other people. Like like herself can be exposed while she is not focusing on exposing her own business and how she can duplicate her business herself in her business so with the wedding suppliers platform I that's something that I think I'm gonna get onto you know um, soon you know it's been there in my mind but I, I think I did need that you know that you know that push so it's it's really something that I'm yes I'm gonna start working on 
So now you're creating this platform. Mm. How is it going to help your business? Okay, so um, my business would also be on there. So I, I guess in terms of marketing, um, my business would you know would also benefit from there. But it would also serve as an as an additional income stream. The only thing she, she must ensure is to make sure those who are registering on her platform are as good as her or can produce as good quality service as she can. That way she could in in expand her income and expand herself. So in terms of you know making an income from the from the wedding supplier um, platform, um, I think that the subscription thing, you know, will be a big revenue maker, but um, definitely just need to give it more thought in terms of, you know, how else, um, or, you know, how, how else to run it. How about perhaps you look into doing some post-wedding shots where people mm. can testify about how they experienced your service. That's good. That's and good. while you are bringing their photos on the day that you bring or you give them their album or whatsoever, they can talk about the quality of your work and how mm. they've experienced your service and that will be an endorsement that you can write on that's and good. create a YouTube mm. channel. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I really love the ideas that she had, you know, around the, you know, the wedding photography business, you know, um, the YouTube channels and, you know, um, in the interaction with the clients. I really love that and I think I'll be, I'll be looking into that. So looking into, tomorrow we'll be looking into uh, funding or investing into this business. Where will the money go and where do you think will be more suitable to, in terms of using this money? Okay. Um, in terms of um, my needs right now, I think there's there's two areas that I think need assistance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the first one is you know is the is the equipment, um, you know, just buying some um, some 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 gear. Secondly, I've just um, gotten someone to assist, you know, with my administration, you know, but it's it, it's it's literally um, I'm, I'm not at a place where I can pay a salary. Okay, uh, you mentioned the, the equipment, mm. you mentioned the, the assistant, mm. but I think le look a little bit more into the equipment, understand how much it costs, understand when you have that equipment how much it will cut costs within the business or where you will make more money mm. that normally you used to use in hiring those equipment. Yes. So maybe that's something that you can go back and ponder on and put it down and see so that it can show in numbers mm. how it looks like when you have this new equipment in your business. My coaching session in Oasis Pocelito was, was good. It was, um, yeah, it was very helpful. Welcome back, Susan. Welcome back, Susan. Welcome back, Susan. Welcome back, um, it was good. It was it was really good. Um, it just really gave me is in doing as a kaya. So I actually went home and, and really just thought about some stuff. So it was it was really good and it was challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, talking about my challenges and good it was challenging. Was it Yeah. Was it Um, excited, nervous. Um, but yeah, uh, ready as ready as I can be. Yeah. Yeah. Is this what you prepared? Yes. Yeah, to is this my notes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, the notes will be enough to make sure we pitch up right. Yeah. Shall we connect with us? All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to Making Moves. Thank you. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm um, feeling good. All right. We're going to jump straight into your pitch. I'd like to introduce you to my fellow judges. On my right is Martine, and on my left is Priscilla. So you yes. met her yesterday, mm -hmm. and you had an opportunity to go through a coaching session with her. You've now got four minutes to sell us on your business. Tell us who you are, what you do, what your growth plans are, and why we should give you money. And that four minutes starts now. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Una Timbonambi, sole owner of Una Timbonambi Photography. You can see. I'm a social entrepreneur. 
um, and I know that might count against me, but nonetheless, um, one of my favorite um, quotes is by Henry Ford, and he says, a business that makes nothing but money is a poor business. Um, and by social entrepreneurship, I don't mean that I intend to run an, a non-profit organization. Um, I'm fully committed to my business. I'm fully committed to making a profit. I'm fully committed to seeing my business grow. However, um, I would also love to use my skills and um, the knowledge that I have and uh, my talents to uplift and to empower others. Um, I really just believe that um, organizations, no matter the size, um, they all have an obligation, you know, to, to add real value to society. Um, we really can't afford to, you know, spend our entire lives being occupied with, um, you know, just building our own empires um, while, you know, the nation is seeing so many challenges. Um, okay, so my business has been running for three years now. Um, and in the past three years, I've done a lot of, you know, um, different photography, you know, services, so like all kinds of portrait work, but looking forward, I'd love to do more. Um, I'd love to focus on weddings and style shoots. Um, weddings, because um, I love weddings, and also, um, you know, they, they create a, a larger revenue. And uh, style shoots, because, um, you know, that's the more creative side of the business, and, you know, that's more in line with my, my USP. So create um, um, style shoots are basically where, you know, you, you come through, you know, you have a makeup artist do your makeup, you have a stylist dress you, and you basically just a model for a day. Um, so the long term, um, the long-term plan is um, to be a, a dominant player in the South African wedding industry, right? And the strategy um, going um, to, to achieve that vision is basically twofold. So the first one is, um, is uh, what I'd like to, I need to, I'm gonna start working on creating an exclusive premium wedding photography brand that is um, sought after. Um, so, um, you know, one of the businesses that I actually look up to, they only book 18 weddings a year at 6,000 to pop. Um, and uh, secondly, I'm passionate about inclusive growth. You know, and um, obviously, you know, because uh, because of the history of our nation, you know, you find that you know certain industries are are not uh, are not as inclusive as, as others, and haven't been growing as well as you know um, others. So I'm, I'm really passionate about seeing you know um, black um, black businesses succeed in in the wedding industry because unfortunately, that's one of the industries where. Um, the, with, with, that's still um, very, very much white dominated. So um, the project that I am working on is called Mzansi Bride, and basically it is a, plat a platform that would um, take the very best of you know um, black wedding suppliers, um, excellent, excellent businesses that people that provide really excellent um, products and services, um, and give them basically a, a platform to showcase um, their work. And so basically, they would then um, subscribe to be on this uh, um, to be on this platform. And you know, uh, Martin, you've got 30 seconds left. Now is probably a good time to tell us what you want to do with the money. Okay. So one of the challenges that I have in terms of um, is, is, is the expense, high expense of um, equipment. So, I mean, if I, um, when I get the in, in investment, I would invest in, in equipment. Um, those are probably the two of the most important um, pieces of equipment that would um, help oh, me to oh, take my business okay. further. Your, your time's up. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for your pitch. How do you think you did? I think I did okay. I mean, I, I, my my time obviously went over time. I would have still loved to, you know, to say more, but um, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to go into a short question and answer session. Yes. An opportunity for you to clarify okay. some of the things that you may not have gotten to. Okay. I'll start with you, Martin. Any questions? Thanks. Yes, Unati. Uh, how many bookings are you? You currently. A photographer, right? Yes, yes. So, how many bookings per month do you do you have? Do you have? Do I have? Um, so, this year um, has has grown. So, from I, I shoot on, on weekends. So, in the past, um, for example, in September, I had probably about twelve bookings in in, in September. In um, October, maybe about ten. And um, I'm I'm actually fully booked until the end of the year. So, I, it, it has really been picking up. Okay, um, and you only do this. 
on weekend? Well, the shooting itself, I mean, because it's, it, it's um, private clients and it's weddings and, mm. you know, private clients who are uh, available on weekends. So I do the actual shooting on, on weekends and the rest of the work during the week. You did 18 shoots in October, you were saying? No, no, no. I said 12 in September. Mm. Um, 12 in September. Yes, yes. Okay, how did you fit that in given your schedule? Okay, so um, a lot of it, um, I actually did some work during, 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 during the week as well. Um, so like I said, with weddings there on weekends, but for example, baby shoots, because it's um, like newborn shoots, the mothers are still at home, you know, their babies, they're they are available. And in certain instances, I would do, because I'm a natural light photographer, I only focus at certain times of the day. So I do like a sunrise and a sunset um, um, shoot on, on one day. So that's how I... So, because that's roughly four a week, um, if you're doing 12 in a month. Mm. So, and you can only do a wedding, that's mm. a full day. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just wondering where you got the other three days a week. If yes, you like I'm doing, saying, I, yeah. I, I did some of them during the week. So, so um, a lot of them, because um, I do a lot of maternity shoots, mm -hmm. and, and obviously with maternity, they book me for newborns. But because for newborns, um, the mothers are still at home in those first, so they're available during the week. So in, in September was actually a very busy month where I actually fit a lot of the clients during the week. And I did, uh, I did some, I did some, t um, I did, on some days I actually did twice a day. So like I do a sunrise shoot and I do a sunset shoot. How much do you charge for a wedding that takes you 12 hours as compared to a shoot that takes you two hours? And if ever they're happening during the week, as he has indicated, you can fit in four in a day. How much will that look like? Okay, so um, with I, I've worked out my rate to be um, an, an hourly rate, um, which. which also, I guess includes the you know the post production in in in, in, in the rate, um, so it's my hourly rate is about a thousand rand. So if I'm doing a um, if I'm if I'm shooting for two hours, so for example, a, a style shoot would be you know two hours, uh, charging around two two thousand rand. Whereas if I'm doing a wedding, you know it's you know it'd be ten hours, I'd be charging accordingly. Thank you very much. Okay. So, 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 okay. <laughs> Look, um, I guess I didn't um, have time to go through everything. Um, that's the only reason I feel like, okay, it went so, so, but otherwise it was, it was, it was good. There are times when you go out there in your market, create some demand, and then you have to outsource the work to other people. Mm -hmm. Martin? Bonati. Any other comments, guys? Ladies, Unati and her photography business, what are your thoughts? I think there's a bit of uh, areas, grey areas for me in terms of time and production time and delivery of service. And I feel like there's a, something like a roof that will limit her for growth. Mm. Yeah. She's awesomely talented. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know if we should be punishing somebody mm. for being... Mm dedicated to their family and mm. and if she's saying that she's got five to six hours a day available to run the business she's you know roughly got a, a 30 hour week that mm. could be enough for what she wants to achieve no, it definitely no, could definitely. be particularly because of the of the time constraints so you know the morning and afternoon shoots um, with lighting and all of that my concern is that the what um, Busiletso is saying is that there will come a time where the business will now stagnate. Yeah. It won't be able to grow to any grow further because of, her, because of her time constraints. And, and, and is that a problem that they need to get to a certain point? I think it will be because we are not running a business that is, she's, she wants to build a business. Mm. And business has to grow. Uh, I, I think she's got time. I think five, six hours a day if you're working six days a week, is sufficient. And it's enough for her to run a business. My only criticism is the fact that I think that the way she wants to place the money is in the wrong things. 
if she's already renting the equipment, it's working. Yes, it's chowing into her margin, mm. but all she needs to do is get enough work and, and she'll eventually be able to buy her Correct. own equipment. If she said to me, I want to spend that money on marketing, mm. I want to Platforms. grow my client base mm. and I want to finish building my online platform mm. because she needs to get, just get clients, get clients, get clients, get clients. Think about it, if she does that, let's say she goes out and do marketing and she starts getting demands, will she meet the, the demand? She's asking for money for the wrong thing, yeah, mm. for but it doesn't mean that she platform. doesn't need money mm. yeah. or that she wouldn't benefit mm. from money. True. Mm. To me, it's viable to give her money because we see that there's a return and it doesn't have a roof on it. No. 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 That ceiling is going to hit. There is that limitation. Mm. What I would suggest that she does is look at the spider web system that she wants to create and she can create additional revenue mm. through creating that without the investment. So we'll hand her over her tasks mm -hmm. and give her advice. <sighs> Suspense is killing me, but yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, but I would actually get to the point sooner mm -hmm. if, 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 if there was a case here. What is that? What is that? <laughs> I hope so. Nati, welcome back. Thank you. How are you feeling about your pitch? Um, so so. Um, I mean, I guess the first part I feel yes went well, but I just feel like I didn't quite quite get to the landing part. Okay. So some feedback around your business. Yes. There are a few things. Um, mm -hmm. The first one I'll touch on, which is most obvious, is the time, time. factor yes. mm -hmm. in terms of the amount of time that you're able to dedicate to it. Mm -hmm. Um, still, still a concern. Mm. Um, so, if if we look at you know when we spoke in our mm. in, in in our session, for instance, mm -hmm. there are times when you go out there in your market, create some demand, and then you have to outsource the work to other people. Mm. So that becomes a little bit of a challenge. So you're going to go out and market some more, um, create more demand, and then you might have to outsource more work to other people. It's, it's, it's still, and, and you're not making money out of the outsourcing. Mm. So, you know, because you're not charging a commission for getting work for other people. Mm. Look, um, I guess with, with that, uh, it's, it's still something that, um, that I, I am thinking about. I mean, it is a, it is a concern on my, on my part as well. Um, because, for example, if, um, if I get two weddings for, 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 you know, for, for one day, you know, um, it, it's a matter of, you know, do I, you know, do I refer to someone else or do I now have another phot photographer in-house to actually, you know, uh, deal with the overflow? So it is something that I, you know, I am, I, I, I am thinking about. Okay, so, you know, consider maybe building your capacity in that way mm -hmm. without adding to your overhead. Mm -hmm. The second thing was you do want to focus on weddings and there's, there's a good opportunity for you to maybe do a bit more marketing towards weddings. Um, we like the, the model around weddings. It's one job. You get to bill a lot on one job, um, manage one client instead of lots of little jobs. So it, it's a good thing. Yeah. But could you do more marketing to the wedding industry specifically yes. and start to focus on that? Yes. Um, any other comments, guys? In addition to that, and I think it stems from our discussion yesterday in our session mm -hmm. uh, of you uh, trying to leverage from the feedback or the testimonies of those that you have serviced yes. and uh, riding on that as uh, it speaks volume 
on your behalf as compared to you telling the people about yes. how good you are. Mm. So creating that YouTube channel yes, where yes, people can always idea. hear the testimonies of, mm. of the clients that you have worked. Because your work is amazing. Again, back to the wedding thing, mm -hmm. right? Your work is really, really good. You, yes. You're very talented. Okay. Um, and please remember that there's quiet time. So wedding yes. is seasonal. Mm. But in the quiet time, everybody's preparing for their, for their big days. Mm. So there's bachelorette parties, there's um, the mom and daughter, you know, um, a bride and mum shoots that I see people doing. Mm -hmm. So look at marketing your your wedding package as a holistic approach. Yes. yes. And say, we'll give you a one-stop shop and that's what it will, you know, that's what it will encompass into it. Creating a journey. So three suggestions, tasks, things that we'd like you to do. Mm -hmm. The first one is around demand creation mm -hmm. in the wedding space. Yes. You need to go out there and create demand. The way to do it is testimonials is one. Get out there and get the testimonials and use those people to be your brand ambassadors, right? Um, two around demand creation is to really think a little bit about, because your, 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 your proposition is spot on, especially for the black middle class. Mm -hmm. So when you find those people, there is a consciousness amongst the black middle class around buying black a lot more than there's been previously. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you leverage that and 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 you know create create more demand in that area? Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that I'd like you to go and implement. Um, and also thinking of how do you tap into your church network. Your husband works a lot with churches. Um, you tap into the church network, and you know church people—they like getting married. Um, <laughs> so, how do you tap into, especially all these charismatic churches that have got a large black middle class? How, how do you make your way into that and use that as, as as one of the ways where you can pick up business? Mm -hmm. Okay, Martin. Bonati. Unfortunately, we're not inviting you back to the next round of Making Moves. Okay. All right. Um, and may I ask, um, I guess, the, the, the reasoning behind it, just the... We feel that you're going to be reaching... The time factor is a big factor because you're going to be buying equipment mm -hmm. and you're going to be marketing mm -hmm. and we don't think that you have the time to be able to service the... the um, you know, the, the marketing that you're going to be doing. Okay. Create enough demand and you'll generate enough of your own business to buy equipment. Buying two pieces of equipment is not going to transform your business. Creating sufficient demand will transform your business. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, a bit sad, I guess, but um, but yeah, I guess they had some some good, you know, good suggestion for the business. So I'm I'm, I'm happy about that.